Hello, my name is Chioma Okwara. This is a 30-minute program that focuses on arts, culture and tourism. My crew and I travel around Nigeria documenting happenings. Today, we're starting from Abuja. Art of Friendship is an initiative of the National Gallery of Art. Twice it held, Art and Leisure was not invited. <laughs> I was in Abuja for the third edition, which took place recently. What we're about to see are exquisite art pieces from five nations, namely Nigeria, China, Czech Republic, Germany and South Korea. A must see, I tell you. Some are Nigerians and others are from the international community. Despite the fact that they're from the East, West and Africa, they have the same interests. Visual arts have been nations who are different in many ways to become friends. The multi-sidedness of creativity presupposes that art comes in handy on all occasions. When the cloud of tension gathers in the air, art diffuses it. When the spirit is dampened, art enlivens it. When peace reigns and invokes the spirit of celebration, Art is employed to ferment and cement it. Today, in its utmost creative power, art has brought nations together. Ceramics is one of the great inventions in ancient China. It is also regarded as a symbol of Chinese traditional culture. Seven of our artists have their works on display. Chinese ceramics is a daily use necessity and can be made as precious artworks. In the ancient times, Chinese ceramics was introduced to other countries through the Silk Road. Nowadays, it is still promoting economic and cultural exchanges between China and other countries. Czech Republic is represented by a painter and illustrator, Odrik Yelen, who is one of the remarkable contemporary Czech artists. Ten of his works, done in the medium of colored lithograph, are on display. Lithography is a printing from stone. So the artist first uh, makes the painting, the picture, on paper, and then he has to grave it into a stone. So it's very special technique, very old technique, which is becoming more and more rare in the world. And uh, there are not many lithographers in Europe uh, left. Uh, and uh, Mr. Yellen, an uh, artist whose works we can see today, is one of the best, not only in the Czech Republic, but we can say in, uh, in Europe. His particular strength is that he is very good in uh, details. As we can see, that all his lithographies, they are extremely well uh, executed, to a point, I would say. Joe Buzzlis, a German who loves to paint upside down, has 11 works on display. Promoting the visual arts and exhibition is an important part of the German federal form of his cultural activities, along with political, economic relations, cultural relations form the third pillar of German foreign policy, and they are one of its most sustainable and visible instruments. Culture creates a broad basis for stable international relations, for mutual understanding and for friendship. The Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany presents 11 woodcuts of Georg Baselitz, one of, the, one of Germany's most celebrated contemporary artists. And I'm very pleased and honored that we were able to display his works of art for the first time here in Nigeria. This exhibition presents the richness and individuality of our culture, but beyond all, that it creates unity in diversity. 14 South Korean artists employed the medium of Korean watercolors on Korean paper in the execution of their works. We think that through this kind of exhibition, we can enhance, we can increase mutual understanding of the people to each other. So this year, we have, we are featuring the uh, Minhwa. That means uh, folks uh, paintings is from 17th century. 
And in this uh, meanwhile, Fox paintings, Korean commoners are expressing their longings for longevity, childbearing, peace, and also they are representing their yearnings for money and others. So I hope that uh, the, through this kind of exhibition, the people, and especially the Nigerian people, can understand the culture and painting of Korea and also they can uh, see the importance of uh, cultural exchanges. 16 Nigerian artists who represent six generations have their works on display. The Art of Friendship exhibition is strictly from the, national, from the, collection, the national collection. Now, when I say six generations of Nigerian artists, what we try to do is we don't just focus on one generation. We try to show, and then we don't want to bring out only the, the strong and the old works. We have a Bruce and Obekpaya here. We have a Jim O'Brimo here. Bruce and Obekpaya is of a generation older than Jim O'Brimo. We have a Rukeme, not Reme. We have a Ben Osagai here. The work right behind me is Abraham Uyubisire. They're of, they're, you know, of the same um, generation. Then we have people like Undu White. Undu White is of the, let's say, the sixth generation. Millicent to some more. We have uh, Emmanuel Adeola. What I try to do when I'm curating any exhibition is to show the old with the new. Art of Friendship is an initiative of the National Gallery of Art. It was conceived four years ago. We want to achieve uh, diplomacy between Nigeria and other countries in the area of in the, in the arts. And of course, they say art uh, speaks a universal language. And we feel if we can have many countries, it will bring about that uh, unity and friendship through the art. Five countries in three continents are represented here. The uniqueness of each participating country's cultural heritage has been brought to the fore. The Art of Friendship exhibition is a podium where the interaction between friendly nations is taken beyond level of rhetoric to a practical demonstration of ties that binds and pushes through a sense of brotherhood. Art is a part of everyday life and is a medium of the expression and preservation of people's history, customs and values. The first edition of Art of Friendship was in 2012 five nations participated. This is the third edition. So far, Nigeria, France, Spain, Italy, Korea, Czech Republic, China and Germany have participated. They are friends and not competitors. Nigerians, we're very confident in ourselves. We're confident in our talent. We're confident in our cultural diversity. Nigeria will never be threatened by inviting other people. It shows our confidence that Nigeria is confident enough to invite bilateral countries who can come into form bilateral alliances. And it's really, really exciting because these are countries from various parts of the world that have a very good relationship with Nigeria. It also goes to show you that Nigeria is a very good host. We welcome our visitors very well. Many are of the opinion that this project should be sustained. Technological advancement that changes the world has never operated in isolation without the involvement of imagination, creativity, and art. That formidable five countries with unique and cultural residents have come together to showcase their diverse artistic strength speaks volume about our willingness to impact positively on the world, albeit through art and diplomacy. All embassies in the country are encouraged to come on board. As many countries as possible. You know, expression in the art doesn't mean you must bring a lot of works of art. Even if, this, if a country is bringing just one work of art, it's still a collaboration. After I attended exhibition, where just one piece was exhibited in a hall. So if all the, country, all the countries are, in, I mean, are involved, all that we just need to do is to reduce the number of works that will be exhibited. So we're aiming at all the countries in Nigeria. Mexico is ask, asking why are they not on this show. Malaysia is asking why are they not on this show. So we, we throw it open. Next year will be bigger and better. Nigeria, through the National Gallery of Art, 
has extended the right hand of fellowship to all the nations represented here. Welcome back. Indeed, Nigeria is good to have visitors. So, we welcome more good people to our great country. <laughs> well, we don't just give, we also receive. Adola Balogu and Adewale Alimi went for a residency program in Sweden and came back with testimonies. Let's invite them to share their beautiful experiences with us. Stay. It was his first residency outside Nigeria. He had butterflies in his stomach. But after spending two months in Sweden, Adewale Alimi shares sweet stories. Going to this place, uh, initially I was kind of very, I was afraid, you know, that how will my work be accepted? These people that are known for quality. But with time, uh, I was able to be confident to actually pick uh, ideas from, my, from that immediate uh, society. So the experience was very fascinating. We arrived in Gothenburg, and from there we moved to a place called Trollatan, where we started working uh, for three weeks to prepare uh, for a show at the Pump House in Trollata, which is a former uh, pump house called Pump Use. Adola Balogu has been to Sweden for a residency program, but he describes this one as a different experience. For residency, especially the self-directed ones, uh, has its uh, challenges, because this is a situation whereby you're not going to be asked to do a certain things or to produce a particular number of works or a particular idea of works, you have to do this on your own. So it's a bit challenging because you have that freedom. But with the freedom you have, what do you do with it? In Sweden, yes, I want to tell you the, that the supports are there. The people are welcoming the galleries because we actually work in two towns. That is um, in um, Trelleton and uh, Uteshberg. In Trelleton, we actually had a field day with materials because um, I actually use discarded materials. And um, for the fact that um, it's a self-directed uh, residency, I did all the things I want to do on my own, directed the whole thing myself. In two months, they worked on their individual projects. Were their inspirations different because they were in a different country? You know, we spent months there, and for a place where you spend months, certainly one way or the other, you must have you know, uh, acclimatized, so to say, with the environment and allow you you've soaked in some uh, ideas if you look at a swedish light uh, it's so pure you know every color comes out very uh, very sharp you know they always call it the swedish light you know at times it's a little bit easy so really the, the body of work that i did there is totally different from what i've been doing here and some of the subjects are subjects uh, pick up from this uh, society so there's a lot of, it's still the same artist, but uh, like with everything, your environment most of the time influences uh, what you do. They had two group exhibitions. Adola Balogu exhibited six sculptures and 10 drawings in the first show, and 12 sculptures and 15 drawings in the second show. Adewale Alimi showed 16 works and 14 art pieces, respectively. He had a third one. It's all exhibition. Almost a thousand uh, residents visit this uh, amazing show. After that, we now move to a place called Gallery Ashley, uh, which is a former yeah. railway station that was converted to a gallery uh, with a sculpture pack. Also, uh, for three weeks, uh, we we'll walk in this place, which is also followed by an exhibition. I actually use discarded materials from the environment and um, I was able to reflect this and people, the people were able to easily connect with the, the, uh, 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 with the works I, uh, I came up with. Polly Alakija is from the United Kingdom. She's lived in Nigeria for many years. She has participated in many residency programs. An artist working in a different environment must have an open door policy to their work and so the communi community in which you're working can observe you at work, understand how you work and therefore learn about the visual arts and your particular practice and how you, you put your work together. So to me each different artist residency program is very different but they have the same 
key elements. A residency program has many advantages. Artists always look forward to it. Art patrons and organizations provide the means for them to achieve this yearning. Art is about creativity and there, there are no boundaries as far as creativity is concerned. What we have looked at is we have seen that these artists have done so well. They have a lot of potentials in them and they needed to, we needed to expand such potentials. We needed to make them do a lot more than they would think they can do. Because we saw that in them. And that's why we have decided that we should invest in them. Spending two months in Sweden and achieving great results has distinguished these artists. I've discovered uh, it's good not to compromise on quality and to be patient with every work, you know. And also the way the works are presented is something uh, I've learned that is so important, you know, the way you present the art, how the art you know, relate to the environment. So those are my takeaways. Because after we had our shows, we also went around the town, this capital, Stockholm, to see other artists' works. I mean, that's very important in the residency. We're able to share ideas, we're able to meet network, and uh, share ideas, we're able to see other, you know, masters. All that you've been reading in books, you know, European artists, all these we're able to see. And um, being not, not my first time, but this second time, we're able to explore, visit private galleries as well, public galleries, museums. It's quite an interesting outing. The artists had great experiences, and listening to them was time well spent for these art enthusiasts. <laughs> Welcome back, a sculptor and a painter with very flourishing careers, who wish Adela Balogu and Adewale Alimi well. Oloku Foundation is the body that promotes the Yoruba culture, and one of the ways she achieves that is by encouraging visual artists. We're going to see five of them who employed different media in the execution of their works. Take a look. Ibrahim Adebayo Lawal is a textile artist who works with Adire, Ashoke and Kente. This particular uh, um, medium of art is called, it's, it's textile, but it's still called quilting and applique. You are seeing an African map with a Arewa logo. This particular logo is something that is common between the, the north and the southwest. So in the southwest, we make use of this particular logo to make a wearable art like uh, um, Danshiki. Um, uh, barrier and so on, but it's common in the in, uh, midst of uh, uh, royal paraphernalia like the ballets and the obas. So that's why we recognize this particular symbol as a, a symbol of peace. This particular medium uh, is not common, it's, some, it's, it's a new idea, a new innovation that we are trying to bring together. If you look at it, it's like a, um, uh, it's, it's a mixed media. We have a, we uh, imply the technique of the chemical work, dye and embroidery for applique and um, uh, sewing. Olusei Joseph's paintings are inspired by happenings around him. My piece is uh, on acrylic on canvas and the title is Change. That is, you know, r right now if you know you are in Lagos, you can see all around the change that is going on, you know, BRT, red and blue color. Gradually you can see the Mulue kind of boss living the legal scene. That is the reason why I picked to choose this title for this. This is uh, another work on canvas, acrylic on canvas. The title is Peaceful Return. You know, why I titled it Peaceful Return is, you know, each and every day with all the hustle and bustle in our country, be it from Sunday to Sunday, there's always occasion everywhere, which you always see these people going about playing. They, they went out and they, they went out on a particular day they played and they have their own fun. They didn't receive any dime, but they were very happy within themselves for playing, you know, on a naming ceremony of a newborn baby. The audience enjoyed their music. They also enjoyed themselves. That is why as they were going home, all of them were very happy within themselves as they were going home. That's what sent the message, a peaceful return. Babatunde Onikwede is visually impaired, but
but very creative. Craft work, which I learned how to do Bati, Kampala, and nylon rope weaving, bag, and many things like that. Because we do um, bags, we do shoes, even different type of design in shoes. Uh, but really, it's not. Uh, it's the time that I have this challenge that I went to learn all these things. Not that I know it before I have the challenge. Sure, you understand me. But when I go the, into the work, I see that it's easy. And but only thing is that um, we don't see people that encourage us. Chinyere Wangko loves to string beads. Sand beads and the crystals. Then the one we call pipe. That's why it's made up of pipe. Pipe and the sand beads too. Then, in addition to that. We have a hand fan, which is equally handmade. I design uh, beaded bags, beaded curtain, belts, chair, table, uh, covered chair, table, cloth, and all that, which is made up of uh, beads. Olambide Uguade draws effortlessly. Whenever I make an artwork, I try to make it real for people to see life in drawing not just resemblance and people will think, I think it looks like, I think it, I don't believe in those things. I make it look real for people to um, see that there's life in drawing. Many who came to see this group exhibition scored it high. I'm highly impressed, especially when I saw a product of a physical challenge man. I think when we can have someone like a physical challenge, Having this beautiful product is worth empowering, is worth encouraging. And the uh, crew arts, we can know much about our history. They are upcoming artists and so need every encouragement they can get. The maiden edition was held here two years back where it was, uh, when it was a solo exhibition by an artist called Ibrahim Adebayo, otherwise known as uh, Agbara Asha. And Ibrahim Adebayo is actually a young artist who uh, does a kind of art called the applique. Applique is majorly with fabric. But uh, one beautiful thing about this year's ex ed edition is that it's not just a solo exhibition. We're having group exhibition comprising of other artists working within. The Center for Black and African Arts and Civilization is in the forefront of arts promotion. We, as an international cultural organization, we try to encourage people who are into different aspects of culture because uh, the local festival, as you know, is into all sorts of arts of the Yoruba people. And um, even then, the local is, uh, I think, the Mamed spirit. But well, that's really not what they worship. They are into crafts and arts. The exhibition part of it has been our, you know, area of focus. Oloku Festival Foundation have members who uphold the Yoruba cultural heritage. In Yoruba land, Oloku is about ocean. And it's, it's one of the most respected heritage, even in heaven. It's one of the most respected heritage that reflected in Quran and Bible. When you read Psalm 24, you will see how they classify Olokun, which is an ocean, and anything about water. There is no way you can live in this world without water. And when you go to Babish or ocean, you will see how flowing ocean, you don't know the, the beginning and the end of that ocean. It's an heritage that is very, very important to celebrate on the basis of festival. It's not about religion. It's about celebrating the heritage. Of Indeed, in this group exhibition, culture and visual arts have met. Good to have you back. I hope you've been inspired, informed and entertained. If you missed any part of today's show, not to worry, you can watch it again and again on www.artandleisure.com.ng. 
please always leave a comment after watching each episode. There's so many episodes for you to watch. <laughs> same time, same station next week. God willing, there'll be something new for you. My name is Chioma Opara. Until then, love yourself. Love Nigeria. Thank you.